The story of Xavier University. It's the story of a city, a saint, a community of people guided by faith and virtue, and a man who has dedicated his life to service and left an everlasting mark on the institution. Founded in 1925 by St. Catherine Drexel and the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament, Xavier University was established as the first Catholic institution of higher education for young African Americans. In addition to St. Catherine Drexel, the school's history, present, and future are inextricably linked to the influence of one other person, Norman Christopher Francis. Guided by a deep Catholic faith, he has unselfishly dedicated his life to service, exemplifying what it means to be a servant leader and embodying the values upon which Xavier was founded. For more than six decades, Dr. Francis has been a part of the Xavier family, beginning in 1948 as a student and continuing through his 47 years as the university's president until his retirement on June 30, 2015. During Dr. Francis's tenure, Xavier has grown to meet the needs of the times and prepare students to assume roles of leadership and service. The sustainable momentum and the culture of high achievement created by Dr. Francis over decades will continue moving Xavier forward far into the future. And he will continue to serve as an inspiration today and for generations of Xavier students, faculty, and staff to come. So Dr. Francis, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk to me today. I, I know you've been a part of the Xavier University community for more than six decades, starting in 1948. You know, most of us can recall the anticipation and fears we had that first day as freshmen. And how is it that you attended Xavier? Well, you know, I had known about this lady who had started uh, school in New Orleans, born and raised in Lafayette, a little small country town. My sister had uh, gone to Xavier that year before me, uh, and I thought, well, that's where I want to go to school. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, we came from meager means, and my dad was a barber. He said he couldn't afford that. Uh, so I decided, well, I'm going to go to the Army. Thank God uh, a good nun intervened and got me a scholarship, and I wound up on the campus in 1948. What is it that kept you, that's kept you at Xavier all these years? Well, two things. Every year, was a better year than the one before it. I saw more students who were succeeding at things they never thought they could ever do or be. And it, it grows on you. And I, I have to say to you that um, mm. one of the greatest thrills, if you want to call it that, uh, for a person who works in a college or even a high school, but someone who is a president and seeing a commencement and there's nothing yeah. like standing on a stage with a diploma in your hand and watching that next student waiting to get it. Mm. It's amazing, and it does something for you. Uh, so I've been trying it for 46 years, and it hasn't changed. It's still great. I know you've been involved in the civil rights movement since uh, early in your life. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about, uh, about your involvement? In yes. Uh, I saw so much of uh, the destruction of people and humanity uh, that I felt I need to do something. And I didn't choose to lead. I really wanted to serve. The Freedom Riders were bombed out of Birmingham, or Bessem, I guess, as you call. They also vowed uh, that if they did get to New Orleans, the bombers were going to bomb wherever they landed. I went mm. in to see the president and said, listen, I remember the biblical feeling of no room at the end. And I said, uh, I think we got to make this decision. She said, make it. And sure enough, right on this campus, those Freedom Riders spent the night uh, after they were bombed in Bessemer. And I can tell you what a sight. I stood on the steps of this dormitory, and it was a terrible sight, a terrible sight. That's something I'll never forget. And I think it's a tribute to the university that we took the risk, uh, and God took care of them and took care of us, too. Tell me how your Catholic values and your devotion to St. Catherine Drexel have inspired your leadership. 
I don't think a day goes by that I don't think about Catherine Drexel. She gave up all of her fortune to serve people. What a love for someone to give up their whole fortune, and I mean everything. Uh, the sisters who came with Catherine Drexel gave up for us all their careers. You're humbled by seeing people who are willing to give up their lives for other people. And to be among a community of giving, and, and not just giving money, you know, people who have money give money, and they say thank you, bye-bye. No, they were giving their lives and, and, and doing it in a way that said, I believe you are not only somebody special, but that you have something that you're going to offer to somebody else. And it's been a motto around here that once you get it, pass it on. Xavier is on the cusp of doing greater things. Uh, and it's not because I'm leaving, uh, because I don't like to use the word I. For people around me know that I always say we. Uh, and that comes from my parents because we were brought up in that biblical system that said you are a part of a family, you share, and you treat people like you want to be treated and the like. And so it was important for us and for me, having served in this role, to never let Catherine Drexel down. Your life was marked by many firsts. You were the first African-American to be admitted to Loyola Law School, the first African-American to head this university, the first African-American on the New Orleans uh, Civil Service Commission. How do you account for so many firsts? I always was serving, and, and it, it's a basic principle. Anybody who th expects to so-called lead has got to first serve. And there's nothing I would ask anybody to do that I wouldn't do myself. Uh, people get amazed when I say, my daddy believed you, you had to work and you had to start early. I started at six years of age because I had to take the cow out to pasture mm. in the winter time. Uh, and then I worked my way uh, by teaching in the summertime uh, recreation. I shine shoes on the main street of my city. And I gotta tell you, I learned more about life shining shoes because I saw every character you ever wanna meet. Leadership means uh, getting people with you and you work with them. That's been the secret. Dr. Francis, permit me to highlight just some of the changes that have uh, taken place between your inauguration in 1968 and the, and the Xavier that we see today. That, it's really an incredible list. So the enrollment has more than tripled. In 1968, the campus consisted of five permanent buildings and a collection of houses, trailers and temporary units, many of which were World War II surplus. You remember that, don't you? Yes, Camp Poche. Yeah, the total campus would have easily fit on one city block. Today we have 16 permanent buildings and manicured green spaces extending out over 63.4 acres. Beyond the readily visible changes, the endowment has grown from under 20 million to over 160 million. Your first graduation class consisted of 179 students. During the intervening years, you have placed the Xavier diplomas in the hands of almost 20,000 graduates. Xavier has received a constantly increasing volume of national recognition for outstanding academic achievements especially in the sciences and pre-medical areas, rigorous graduation requirements, and our scholarly athletes, as well as the intellectual and moral quality of the alumni. And the list goes on. I can't take credit for all of what you've just read, but I was very happy to be a part of it. The first two people I called when the sisters asked me to serve as the first lay president were two alumni members who uh, one had worked with me when I was executive vice president at Xavier and had gone to Washington. The other was working for the anti-poverty program. Uh, I made the phone call to one guy by the name of Clarence Jupiter and the other was Tony Rochelle. And I wouldn't want to leave out uh, my special assistant. Forty-four years she's been with me. 
Everybody should have one like K that. K. Watkins. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. The dedication and loyalty of this faculty staff, you know, it's still secret. I was asked to come to a number of cities to be a president. I was asked to join the government. And I said to them, why should I step down? I'm in a place where everybody ought to want to be. And so I'm happy. And uh, uh, I look at the, I look back at those years and say, the best is yet to come. And I believe that. I know you're married to a wonderful one. Tell me how it is that you met Blanche. It was here on campus, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I don't think I would be here if it were not for her, without question. Uh, and she loved uh, Xavier, without question. So you've told the board that June 30th, 2015 will be your last day as president on this campus. Um, it's been a wonderful 47 year run. Tell me what brought you to this point to retire. Well. Uh, I'm not getting younger. Uh, I used to do two steps at one time. I'm doing one at a time. And I said uh, throughout my time, I should have left maybe before Katrina, but I didn't. Uh, and I started thinking more seriously about it two years ago, at least two years ago. But I knew that a time was coming. And I could see that Xavier was on its way and it didn't need me, quote, to help them necessarily, but they could call on me whenever they wanted. Uh, but I thought it was time to turn the leadership over to someone else, uh, and that whoever would accept this role would be taking a miracle that they didn't have to worry about. We are prepared for the future, uh, and I think that this was the time and uh, in making it, uh, I feel very comfortable, extremely comfortable. In fact, if you ask me to spend another year, I'd say no, because I have come to terms with the fact that it's time to turn it over. You've left an indelible mark upon this university, and I know you'll always be a part of Xavier. I'd like to thank you for taking the time today to, to share your thoughts with me. It's been a privilege. It really has, and it's a blessing, and I uh, would have never thought it. Thank you.